Hey everybody, it's one o'clock or thereabouts. I am Kathy Hester of PlantBasedInstantPot.com and HealthySlowCooking.com and uh, I'm here for our normal weekday one o'clock to do something. Today we're going to unbox my Rancho Gordo Bean Club shipment. So this is not a new shipment. So I realize this is a shipment I think came in January. Oh, hi, Miss Linda. How are you? I am doing pretty good. I think the stress was taking the toll of the new normal, and I slept way in. Like, I'm not even going to tell you what time it was that I got up. I probably will before this is all over. Um, but it was very, very late. I was actually trying to read and do some stuff, and I fell asleep. So how are you doing today? And how are you guys? I see a bunch of you are on. And I would love, as always, to know who's there, so say hi. Tell, you can tell me where you live, what the weather's like. It's still kind of cloudy and 40-ish here in Durham, North Carolina. And I also want to just know how you're doing in general and how everything's going. We're into kind of week three of social isolate, isolate. Oh my gosh, I can't say that again. Isolation, right? So, and I keep calling it the new normal because it's just weird. It's just plain weird. Um, so I would love to know what you guys are doing and what you made. So uh, yesterday I actually made another batch of the Cruciferous Crunch. And if you ever want to, if I'm ever talking about videos and you wish you could go see them. So almost all the time I go live in Plant Based Instant Pot Facebook page. And if you're looking there, then on the left-hand side, if you keep looking down, a, um, it doesn't have a search function the same way as the group does. So if you're in Vegan Recipes Cooking with Kathy Hester, you can just search the group. But you can click on the video tab and see, it should show you the titles at least, so you can go back and see. So the Cruciferous Crunch, I made a whole new batch because it's just really awesome. It is... You, um, a pre-made blend that in the past, in the old normal, we would all get that from Trader Joe's, right? So now we're getting it from our refrigerators and using a grating. So I'm using the grating blades in my food processor to make it. And it's like cabbage and broccoli stems and carrots. You can put kale in there. You can put um, cauliflower stems in there and we just grated it all up. So I brought out the heavy duty food processor that those of you who are with me for a long time, I am not a fan of the food processor, but for this task, it's a winner. Uh, Carolyn says hi and then it's, she's in Chicago and it's sunny. And um, Joanne said that, that this is the box that she found the quote about the word healthy. Okay, so we're gonna look at the little newsletter that comes with it. Yeah, the world as we knew, know it now. Um, and, and know, too, that some of the stress may be a little insidious right now. So I'm finding that for me. I'm, I'm still working. I am, in fact, working possibly more hours than I was working before. So um, be sure... And almost everything that I tell you, I'm telling myself too. So I make sure you're taking care of yourself. If you're feeling a little extra tired and you can take that extra couple of hours of sleep and you're not just sleeping to avoid things, but you're sleeping because your body's just like, oh, I need to go back to sleep a little while, do it. Same thing. If you feel like you need to have more water, keep that water cup with you all day long and sip on it so that that makes it easier for you to stay hydrated because sleep and hydration are really important. Obviously eating veggies and legumes are too. Uh, let's see, Brenda says, hi everybody, Rancho Gordo, a bean club box. I always wanted to know what that club's all about. And it comes a few times a year. It is not super cheap. Um, you don't get a deal, but you get some surprises and you get some beans that no one else gets. So let's look at this for a minute and then we'll kind of come back in. And again, I see there's lots of you. I will move my computer out of the way a little bit. Okay. So I opened the box because I figured you didn't need to see me struggle with that. <laughs> and there's always some Rancho Gordo tissue paper. 
And I know, you know you're a bean head when you're like, oh, look, it's Rancho Gallardo tissue paper. But I am a geek. You saw my Ravenclaw, right? So I am a Harry Potter geek, a food geek, and a bean geek. I have all the geekdoms. So if you're feeling a little geeked out by, I wish I had that tissue paper, I'm with you. That's all I have to say. Okay, so I will most likely save this. And this is pre-new uh, normal times, so I'm not feeling like I need to um, disinfect or anything. This has really been sitting in the box probably for four months. And then they have a little bit of recyclable brown paper. And they have a newsletter. And so I'll just let you see this part, right? So we get it per quarter. And a happy place for bean people is Rancho Gordo. Is that not the cutest thing either? Brenda, you're totally a bean geek. Um, and that's one of the things I love about you. And let's see. Okay, and this must be what um, Joanne was telling me. She had just put up um, a quote about health. And I'm seeing that. Uh, Julie Ch Julia Child famously said, I just hate health food. Um, and this is, I believe, written by Steve, Steve, who owns Rancho Gordo. I understand her statement. Health food can be shrill, preachy, and loaded with judgment. The funny thing is, while I hate health food, I do t take delight in reading how healthy beans are and adding and the importance of cooking whole foods. Okay, so he's actually looking around and talking about that. And that's kind of... Oh, here we go. I, I was warned recently to be very careful and to read food labels closely because of sugar or wheat or whatever gets slipped into all of our food. It took me a minute, and I may sound pretentious or unbearably hipster, but most of the food I buy doesn't have a label. I'm hardly the billboard for a healthy lifestyle, but I make beans once a week, cook almost every day, and my refrigerator is stocked with good food. I'm old enough to remember when carob was considered healthy and chocolate was the devil. Now it's apparently the other way around. Fat was the problem, now it's carbs. The reality is there's a lot of great food that's nutritious, easy to prepare, and tastes great. I would much rather focus on, the, on that than the debate which corporate fast food chain has the best chicken sandwich. I'm too busy for that. It's hard not to think about health at the beginning of a new year. See, way late on opening this box. Am I doing everything I can? Should I be more extreme? Did I indulge too much over the holidays? A new year feels like a chance to start over. And you know what? In a lot of ways, this new normal feels almost like a new year, doesn't it? Um, and, and I do. I'm starting, uh, part of me feels that, like, beginning of the year pressure to do things right and to be good and to clean up everything and do all the things. And right, it never works at the beginning of the year, which is why by April we're like, well... Maybe I'm eating healthier. Maybe I kept something that was a real lifestyle change. To me, there's a little bit difference between sometimes goals and lifestyle changes. A goal is good if it's I want to post two times a week to my website, right? But a goal of I want to eat healthier is just so hard to know when you've done that or haven't done that. So like knowing... Because I know some of you don't eat oil, right? So that's a very um, measurable goal. And so think about these kind of measurable goals over just this lofty, I'm better now because of, right? And let me check some questions here. And all that was um, Steve's words and not mine. Um, but I, I think he's got something going on. And Brady says, yay, all the beans, all the yummy beans. And Cindy says, geek dumb, and she laughs. Oh, Cindy, don't hurt my feelings. No, just kidding. I'm kidding. You're not hurting my feelings. I'm a big old geek. Steve is awesome. And even Cheryl loves Steve. So, Steve of Rancho Gordo Beans. And uh, Carol says the newsletter is cool, too, as well as the beans. I know we haven't even gotten to the beans yet. Um, and Joanne says it's two paragraphs above the Marcella. Ah, okay. I see what you're talking about. 
And I'll leave on a conversation Doc, Dr. Roxanne's school had with the great food writer, Michael Rollman. She said, healthy is a bankrupt word. We talk about healthy bread and healthy this and healthy that. It's wrong. We are healthy. Our food is nutritious. And then he says, I hope you have a healthy, nutritious, and delicious new year. And I, and together, I believe we're going to eat very well. And I do like that. Yeah. Because it, it, you know, we make these choices to eat more nutritious food. And I, I do like that. I think that's a great thing to think. Um, and Brenda says, Steve is always awesome. And you guys can, I see more people coming in, so you can still tell me about your day. So it also talks a little bit about the different beans and, and some recipes that go along with those. Let me go back overhead. So, um, and I'll point these out a little bit as we go. And look, I mean, this is, this is no joke. This is not like a scribbled quick note put in here. Um, you do get free shipping once a quarter. So that is something that you um, get as being a Bean Club member. And know that it, it sells out very quickly and you can be on the wait list for a long time. I'm suspecting right now for a very long time. Um, I know that he had posted something about he was going to skip this quarter's but then he changed his mind. But he, he has people working in the warehouse like 24 seven right now. And so if you do order from Rancho Gordo or really any other um, supplier right now, as realize that they're working as hard as they can and they're getting things shipped in as quickly as they can. And like I say every day, <laughs> be kind, right? Because those are people out there risking their lives for us in the warehouse, packing these things up so that we can have beautiful beans right now. So give them a little grace. Same thing with Misfit Market. Um, their delivery dates are being off by a couple of days. They've been in communication, I think, with most people. Just remember, if you get a shipment of produce or beans or anything else, so if I got a shipment from Rancho Gordo and all the beans were broken open, I just take a picture and I email them and then they will make it right. Probably not today, but they will make it right either by giving me a discount or replacing them or taking it off of my order. Um, same thing with Misfits Market. I, I get a little worried because since Misfit Market and, and Rancho Gordo, really anyone who's sending us stuff right now, then it goes to the UPS and the FedEx, which are being, it, it's like worse than Christmas right now for them. And they don't have all that Christmas help. They don't, I don't see 17 UPS trucks come down my street every day, but I know they're loaded down as hard as they can go. So things are going to go slower and there's going to be some mistakes and give people some grace and give yourself some grace as you're trying to do all the things today and tomorrow and the next day. And that's something I should record and put in my head over and over and over again. Um, and Sydney said um, her whole life people have called her a geek and she's laughing because she's in a group that understands a geekdom. Oh yeah. Even the people who are not fans of Harry Potter talk to me and they say they like my Harry Potter t-shirt. So I'm like, oh, I really have found my audience. <laughs> Because you guys can accept me the way I am. Geeky about food, geeky about Harry Potter and and there was, there's something about being able to look at these things that give you pleasure in the middle of stressful times. If it's because of the new normal or because of something else or because it's allergy season, it doesn't matter. We're all old enough to be able to know what gives us some simple pleasure and enjoy that. Uh, and Cindy says, how expensive are the beans? They're fairly expensive. I think they are usually five to seven dollars a pound so they are quite expensive so to me this is my treat now I also have a whole bunch of other beans so I get beans from the regular store and I sometimes save these which I shouldn't have so just realize the older the beans like everything beans are the variable the older they are the longer they may take to cook okay does that make sense and so that means if you're doing it in an instant pot, if you haven't taken a class with me yet, you might cook the beans exactly the same amount of time, open it up and go, Kathy's a liar. But the beans are the variable, my friend. 
<laughs> I swear I don't lie to you. But one thing, and I do this all the time in the classes, I have um, two little tasting spoons. So when you cook a bean in any manner, in the oven, on the stove, in your slow cooker, take one of the beans, place it here, take another spoon, smush it. If it smushes all the way, it's done. It's awesome. It's soft in the middle. If it splits in half like a nut, it needs to cook longer. And if it won't even do that, it's got to cook a lot longer. Okay, so just know that. Um, and Carol says hers are a treat as well. And let's see. And Carol says she's in wait mode now for a while. Um, I just ordered, but don't get the, the newsletter comes in the bean club. So this is a special package that happens. And, and I'm guesstimating, I haven't looked in a long time. So if any of you know the price of the bean club, I think it's, could it be $50? Something like that, a quarter. Um, and they, and that's a good point, Brenda. Brenda's saying, uh, Rancho Goder beans are about five to seven dollars a pound, but they're the first year harvest. And so, they usually cook up really well. I know one time they didn't cook up so well, and actually Steve sent out a replacement bean. It was no fault. It was a brand new bean. It just wasn't cooking up that well. Um, and Joanne said she waited two years for a membership. So, um, and Deborah says, love, give them grace, and yourself some grace. Yeah. And, and it's, it's important. I don't know if you guys can hear the beeping back up. So there could be a max explosion coming up soon. I don't know if you can hear everybody. I believe some cat litter is being delivered to us by the heroes that deliver cat litter. And um, let's see. And, and Cindy, too. It's still, even though they're expensive for beans, they're way more reasonable than meat. So if you're not having any meat, this can be kind of, your treat instead. If sometimes we'll get like something like Jardin or Beyond Meat will be our treat, and that ends up being about the same amount as this would be. So it just depends on what is on your okay list. And Joy says, if you want into the club, you'll need to sign up on the wait list. When your turn comes up, they'll send you an email and let you know, and you got to jump on it. Just jump on it, okay? Because that that I. I was toying with it for a long time, and then I finally got on. Brandy said, there's so many beans Rancho Gordo offers that you simply can't get in a regular store. And that's true. There's some really cool ones. And um, Carol said, a lot of varieties are sold out now on their website. And Sydney says, I should buy some and plant some. And I think that's a great idea. I, that would be awesome. I do not know how many plants you'd have to plant to get enough beans to save. But you know who would know is my friend Mia who is in South Africa for the next few days because they've shut down the borders. So she went for a visit with Howard Jacobson, and they are in South Africa, I think, now for the next probably three weeks-ish. Okay. Oh, that's what Brenda said. She heard the beeping and looked out her window. <laughs> okay, now on to the beans. It's going to be very exciting. There's not a whole lot of things. So... These are black beans, but so this Rancho Gordo project, um, and I'll read this to you instead of trying to get you to read this tiny print. Woo, maybe I'll read it to you. Um, it's the, the, these beans are the results of two companies working together to help small farmers continue to grow their indigenous beans in Mexico despite international trade policies that seem to discourage genetic diversity and local food traditions. These rare beans are grown using century-old methods and may contain small pebbles or other natural debris. We know to always check our beans, right? Look your beans or look up your dentist's phone number. It's up to you. I say look your beans. Um, please clean them thoroughly before cooking. So, so even these look like our plain old black beans. These are still... I like to think of them, though it's not exactly the same, almost like a fair trade. So basically, Steve is working with farmers in Mexico to preserve their heirloom beans so that we can try them. And so I, I have a special place in my heart for him working with saving these indigenous heirloom varieties. It's just amazing. And some of these will only come around once or twice. And so it's, it's a real treat to make them. 
Okay, and let's see what he was saying about them in here. Do, do, do. Does he say about them? Yeah, and they're, oh my God, I'm going to butcher this. Santaneria, Santanera Negro Delgado beans. And, um, and he's saying these are to cook them simply in a clay pot. And then after they're finished, you can make refried beans with them. And then he um, he also has a dish that he's talking about. And and all the recipes on here are not vegetarian or vegan. So be aware of that. It's easy enough. So like those of you who are oil free, make your beans oil free, right? Don't listen to anybody else. Now he is talking about using lard. Now, if I were going to make this traditional recipe, I would veganize it by using coconut oil instead of lard, and that would be that. Um, of course, we all know, and you can find recipes for um, oil-free refried beans on plantbasedinstantpot.com and healthyslowcooking.com. There's two different recipes on plant-based instant pot. One is for a black bean and, um, that I put dried chilies in and it's really yummy so the dried chilies rehydrate and then when you puree everything together it adds this really dark amazing flavor to it the other one is for canary beans which are um you can get in your local hispanic market so there's that let's see what we got here and joanne ordered cat litter too okay so we've got these beans okay Yeah, and Joanne says, that's my job to veganize them. Oh, I like these beans. And I don't, since these are in Spanish and I don't speak Spanish, just please forgive me or phonetically spell out anything for me that you need to. It's Rio Zapate. Zape, Rio Zape. And it's a rich, dense, pinto-like bean with hints of chocolate and coffee. Great with Mexican food or as a pot bean with a squeeze of lime. So Steve really favors cooking these beans by themselves and enjoying just these delicate overtones, right? Like you would a coffee or a wine. And I find him fascinating because of that. Um, a lot of these beans like these, they're beautiful when they're dry and when you cook them, they turn into kind of pinto beans. So don't expect all these beautiful colors to necessarily translate. Some of them will and some of them won't. And in the, I have the Great Vegan Bean Book, the second book that I wrote. And so in here, I have regular varieties of beans with lists of heirlooms that you could substitute because you can't always get the heirlooms. And I know I have something with Ria Zapati, but I don't know if it will be in the index because it's an option. Yeah. I'll see what I can find later and put them back up for you. Um, and don't forget, if you're looking to get a book right now, you're not going to be able to get a hardcover or paperback book from Amazon. They're limiting what they're shipping right now, but you can get eBooks and you can get them right now. And in fact, I'll let you in on a secret next week, starting next Monday for a whole week, the eBook of this one, the easy vegan cookbook. I have to remember what I picked up. Ha! <laughs> it's going to be a very interesting day. It's going to be 99 cents. So if you don't have this one, get it. And I will talk about that next week. They just told me now that they're putting the ebook on sale. And it's going to be very cheap. And I want you all to buy it. And, or to buy it for your friends because it's seriously a dollar. I don't feel bad asking anybody to spend a dollar. If, of course, you are out of work you're having issues with money, all these things for the new normal, I am not talking to you. If you want to, great. If you have it, thank you. If you don't, don't feel like you have to spend any money, please. Okay, so let's see about the Rio Zapate, Rio Zapate beans. Oh, and Brandy's telling me to roll my R's. Rio Zapate. That just sounds insulting. So the one thing I don't want to do is be insulting to the Spanish language. It's beautiful. Um, so 
And Steve has a foolproof um, basic bean recipe on the website that works every time, and that's Brenda, and it's RanchoGordo.com. And Brandy loves the Easy Vegan book. Oh, here, let me. I should be um, putting these comments up here. I'm getting excited by the beans. Woohoo! Well, and Linda, it is the publisher offering the book at that price. I don't, when I'm going through a traditional publisher, I don't have the options, but they do, and I'm really glad that they're doing it because it's a good time for that book to be out and about, and hopefully it can help people. I do know that when it came out several years ago, I think it was PETA actually bought copies and sent it to our Congress people, and I was super excited about that too. Okay, back to the beans. So actually, let's, let's see what he said about the, he's doing, okay, <laughs> it's going to be all Spanish. Um, it's, in, it's, it's something in a Rio Zape bean sauce. The rich taste of Rio Zapes make a happy mix with a sharp onion and earthly cilantro. You can also use your rare and traditional Santaneria Negro Delgado beans from the shipment as well. So basically, oh neat. So this recipe is really interesting. So it's basically putting it in tortillas. And, and you know, homemade tortillas, I'm thinking maybe we'll make. I am the worst tortilla roller possibly on the face of the earth. But maybe this will make me practice for you guys. Okay, so the next one is basically um, a cannellini bean, Marcella. And don't you just, I just love this lady too, his, his logo lady. And it's just a real, it's from Italian seeds and it's a creamy bean with a thin skin. And so what that means, and that's, I find with the canary beans also, they kind of have, a, they have a medium skin, but they're so soft and creamy on the inside. And these are great. So almost any recipe that I call for white beans, these would work. And let's see, he's saying cannellini with tomatoes and sage. And of course he puts it in Italian, which I can't say either. But so basically you're, I'll, I'll see if any of these recipes are on his website, too, and if they are, I'll share them here. Um, but these are yummy. And so usually for us, a lot of times, one bag of this can make two meals. So I don't know if how he's doing his, He's doing it for a whole pound, but a lot of times if I'm making refried beans or something, I will just make um, half of it for two of us and still have leftovers. <laughs> And Joanne says, so what if your tortillas suck? They taste good anyhow. That sounds like you've been listening to me. I appreciate that. Because, um, yeah, they are, they are good. And I made some, um, some Indian flatbread that did not rep <laughs> didn't represent or resemble any circular Indian flatbread I've had in my life. And then I'm like, you know, maybe I just need to practice. So that could be really good, too. Okay, this is one of my fa favorite beans. Okay, I have a lot of favorite beans. Yellow-eyed beans. So let me show you those. And they're so pretty. Can you guys see? There, there we go. How pretty those are. And so you can make baked beans with them. And, you know, he's saying they're perfect as a replacement for white beans, stews, navy bean soup. They're amazing in baked beans, and I believe I gave you guys a baked bean recipe recently on Plant-Based Instant Pot. If I did not from the new book, Gluten-Free and Vegan um, Cooking in Your Instant Pot, I will try to get that up this week because it's my new favorite um, baked bean recipe, and it's with apples, and oh, it's so good. And so these would be perfect. So maybe I'll even do a demo with that happening. So that's four pounds of beans so far, which is significant, right? And then we've got the caro beans. And I do know, and see, aren't they cute the way they look all beautiful? And they are cousin to the Anastasi beans. And they're great for soup, stews, chili, or on their own. And you're going to find that with a lot of beans. So... I find the bean descriptions to be very similar to, um, 
let's see. Here we go. And Joanne's talking about the beans, I believe, are the yellow-eyed beans. And I know I have my Vaccaro bean chili in here somewhere. So I, I will, and it's a pretty picture. These pictures Renee Comet did for me in this, in the bean book. And actually, here, let me go here. Let me just find that really quick, because I just love the picture for that one, if I can find it. stews. There's a good chance it's going to be in here. Oh, and these are good too. Actually, we don't have those beans though. I've got some in the... There's also um, the runner beans that are really big and meaty, and they're really good. Um, and this is... You can find this recipe at um, healthyslowcooking.com. And that's pineapple rum beans over coconut, lime, sweet potatoes. And that stuff is magic, is all I have to say. Um, and Cindy said, I've been taught bread making and Indian breads break all the rules. Indian breads are the best. I miss them so, so much. Um, and let me put this one up here so that people can see that. I'm still looking for the Vaccaro bean. There we go. So this is a vaquero bean and tempeh chili. And so like I said, you'll notice that a lot of the fancy beans end up looking a little bit pinto-y um, when they've been cooked. No fault of your own. Just don't, it's a lot like when I make that mixed um, lentil, like the autumn lentil blend and you see the oranges and the yellows and all the colors and then it kind of all goes away. It still tastes different. It still has different textures in your mouth. So realize that's something that's pretty amazing. Oh, and um, Brittany said the New Orleans red bean jambalaya uses Rio Zapate. Okay, so I think on page 162, Brittany, you are just my favorite sometimes. You even gave me a page number. I love all of you equally. But I do get a little excited about page numbers. Again, total geekdom, right? Okay, there we go. And that's the New Orleans red bean jambalaya. And the Rio Zapate beans would work really well as that. I also, and that's these, let's have, have their close up. Um, and I wrote this book a long time ago. This was my second book, so it was probably eight years ago. So forgive me if I can't find all these really quickly. Um, and yellow eye beans, I also use instead of pen uh, instead of black eye pea beans in some things. You may have to cook them a little bit longer, but often they're pretty fresh because they're usually, uh, the ones that I get are usually an early harvest, and that could be why. Oh, Helene says she loves me. I love you too, Helene. I don't know if you guys know Helene or not, but she runs the Triangle Veg Fest. And many veg fests all over the country. So even if you're not from here, you may know her. She is amazing. Oh, tell her we said to say hi to Stephen. Oh, and Helene, Cheryl says hi to Stephen, and so do I. So do all the girls here. And then um, Brandy says page 144. Oh, and there's no picture, though. The cheesy root vegetable bean bake. Because, you know, I... I asked a lot of you, a lot of you are already in the um, free private Facebook group, Vegan Recipes Cooking with Kathy Hester, but if you're not, please, please go and join. It's a great community of women. You're seeing them here already. There are some men there too, so if you are a man, you are more than welcome to come in. It just seems like more women show up on the lives than everybody else. Um, but I would love to have you there, and I will post some of these things. I've also posted some um, queries about what classes I should teach coming up. And right now, I have to tell you, I'm leaning towards a bean class again. So some of the classes I asked about did not ask about a bean class, but maybe pushed off for May or June. So don't think that your opinion matters to me a lot, and I really want to teach you what you want to learn. So know that. Um, aw. And Helene says she loves me too. Okay. And the, yeah, there's and there's so many things. Yeah, the page numbers help a lot. There's a page, so she's also saying the enchilada casserole on 136. 
I'm glad I, I happened to grab this book to come up here today. 136. Oh, yeah. And actually, there I can tell you a story about this picture if you want. Let's see. There we go. You can see it better without that light glare. So it's just veggies wrapped up in a tortilla and then this um, cashew bean queso. So this is before I made the cauliflower queso. So a lot of things in the bean book I make with beans, right? Then in the oat book I make with oats. And so just to show the versatility of things, it's kind of cool. I think. But so for the picture, actually nothing. I, I sauteed some stuff. We rolled the tortillas and poured the sauce over. So it is not actually how it looks when it gets cooked. Shh, don't tell anybody. Oh, and Carol says, yay, bean class. Okay, awesome. And oh, and Ju Judy says she just come. she is just coming in. And what book am I referencing? It's my second book, The Great Vegan Bean Book. And so like I was saying earlier on Amazon right now, it, most books you're not able to get hardcovers. I'm not sure if, if they've done that across the board or just new books. So you can check, but you can still get Kindle books. And also things like the Great Vegan Bean book, you can probably check out at the library. I don't know if they have my books as Kindle ebook virtual ones or not, but you could always look. I'm checking out a lot of books in my library right now. I know, shh, Joanne, I'm not there yet. Um, and Brandy wants to make that casserole. Okay, we got one, we've got one more bean before we get to our surprise. There's always a surprise, and I like that. So this is Christmas limas. And let me let you see how pretty. They're beautiful, and they're ginormous. They're, okay, so like, how can I show you? There we go. See how big, that's one bean right there. That is a big bean, so it is going to be meaty deliciousness, right? So it's going to be a mouthful. It's going to have a really interesting mouth feel. The top skin, your teeth are going to kind of bite in through. And that's when I say meaty, obviously I don't mean meaty in the way that seitan is meaty. But it's just for a bean, it's like a hearty bean, and it's like really good mouth feel. Okay, and you're welcome, Judy. And last one just because, okay, great. And Christmas limas are awesome. I know I have, a, actually the front of the book has some Christmas limas on it. That's those guys. And I, those are Mother Stollard beans, which are some of my favorites. And they are um, the yellow-eyed beans. And I know, that I have a Christmas lima bean. Here we go. So I have a Christmas lima and bulgur salad. Because that's kind of nice if you're using them in the summer, which typically Christmas lima beans would be used in the winter. But look at me here. It's almost summer, and I have more Christmas lima beans. Um, since I wouldn't be able to eat bulgur now because I can't eat gluten, um, even in here in the recipe, I already had an option to use quinoa, millet, or amaranth instead. Um, so know that even though this is an early book, there's still gluten-free, soy-free, oil-free options. I may not always put salt-free options in the, in the um, super early books because they wouldn't let me. But wherever it says salt, if you can't have salt, just here in your head, salt substitute. Because they are for you. Right? So I want everyone to be able to eat delicious. And Deborah says she loves that book. So many amazing recipes and really good information on beans. i got to get used to popping these puppies up. Um, and thank you. Thank you. It's, the book did really well. Now for my surprise that Joanne was talking about. And they do have some spices out and, and things that they send out. And they're really good at packing these jars. Oh! <gasps> Let me see. Yeah. <gasps> nope. I thought there for a second it might. This is a little bit different. It's stardust. There we go. Chili dipping powder for fruit and more. So it has dried chilies, crystallized lime, some brown sugar, sea salt, and Mexican oregano. And we've talked about the different oreganos before. And I actually have a wee bit of some of the um, 
oregano I've gotten in another box. Actually, it may not have been a box. I think that Steve sent me this when I did a couple of recipes for one of their books. And so, and Mexican oregano versus regular or um, kind of Italian oregano, it's a little more floral. So it's in between. So here's regular oregano. Here's marjoram, right? Marjoram has a big floral flavor. And in the middle is where I feel that Mexican oregano falls in. So this Stardust stuff is, oh my God. And I did promise you we were going to make some of this. So um, I, will, I have some limes. Let me see if I can start dehydrating some of the limes. It smells so good. So you smell the deep earthiness of the chilies. And it has a little bit of the Mexican oregano, but you don't really smell that. And you can smell a little bit of the sharpness of the lime. Okay. How can I do this and not take a taste? I hope it's not too spicy. It's magic, you guys. It's not too spicy. It does have a bite from the salt. So if we were going to make this salt-free, I would recommend that maybe you put some garlic powder in it to give it just a little bit of that salt bite. The sugar gives it a little bit of sweet, but we could use a date sugar instead of that. So we could totally make a whole food plant-based version of that that could be sofas friendly. And sofas, for those of you who don't know, Chef AJ, she, he, she um, uses a little bit more strict version of SOS, which is no sugar, salt, or oil that some whole food plant-based people follow. She also doesn't do any sugars or alcohols or flours. Okay, great. Let's see what we got here. Lima beans are great with fresh and dried dill. Uh, it's a Persian dish. Ooh, I like that. And um, I don't eat the animal products often served with the rice. Okay, do you mean like as a traditional dish if you go with people? I'm, and the thing is, is even traditional dishes, and I, and I do not mean in any way to insult anyone's culture, but just like my culture growing up Southern, right, we're a very pork heavy people um, growing up, but it's very easy for me to substitute things to make barbecue, right? I can use jackfruit, I can use shredded sweet potatoes, I can use um, shredded um, mushrooms. There's just all these different things that you can get kind of a similar, like from dark to light kind of flavor added in there that could be really helpful. And Judy, I would love if you could send me this recipe or a link to a recipe, even if it has meat in it, I'd like to see what that is and see if I could recreate it and veganize it for both you and me. And um, you can always email me at kathyhester at gmail.com too. And, um, Joanne says she likes it on air fry potatoes, the stardust, and that'd be great. In the air fryer class this past weekend, we put some of it on corn while we roasted it because corn in the air fryer is amazing. And so if you don't have this and you can't get anything from Rancho Gordo right now, how I do my corn is I actually take slices of lime and rub it on the um, actual corn kernels of the cob and I put a little bit of salt, you could put a little chili powder, you could put a little salt substitute. And then if you roast it in the air fryer, it actually caramelizes a little bit and really makes the flavor pop. Okay, awesome. Oh, and Cindy said she wants that Persian recipe too. Okay, guys. Um, let's see. Any? So this is pretty much it. Let me see. I, um, there's chili vaquero, chili verde with vaquero beans, and he is using meat, but we could certainly, if you have this recipe, you could use jackfruit in its place without any problem at all. And let's see what he's doing with the Chris, the Christmas limas. And he has a Christmas lima bean stew with celery. He uses a little bit of, um, olive oil which of course, those of you who eat oil-free know we can do without that easily. Um, celery, scallions, uh, garlic, caraway seeds, tomatoes, 
and uh, a lemon. That sounds really delicious. Maybe we'll make that tonight. And so what I'm going to do when I get off of here is I will look on Rancho Gordo's site and see if he has any of these recipes up. He may or may not. But if he does, I will share them, even if they have meat in them, but I will put use jackfruit or just leave out, right? And if I don't get in the nitty gritty of whatever it is that maybe you can't have in your diet, comment back and I will find you another adjustment, okay? Because that's totally easy peasy for me. And um, Judy's saying healthy cooking with Shada. I hope it's Shada. And if it's not, my sincerest apologies. Um, might have a recipe. So we'll go check that. And she's going to check the original recipe to try and find. She's going to try and find the original recipe for us. Okay. So what else do you guys need today? This, is everybody doing okay? And we talked about the beans, and it's just so much fun to do an unboxing, isn't it? Even though it's a small one, you get to learn a lot about a lot of things. If you're looking for um, some heirloom bean recipes, you can go to HealthySlowCooking.com and PlantBasedInstantPot.com, and I have a few on each for sure. Um, you could probably try searching for heirloom, and that should help. Also, if you find a recipe, uh, let's say you're cleaning out your pantry stash right now because of the new normal, right? If you have a weird bean, you're not sure what to do, email me or post it in Vegan Recipes Cooking with Kathy Hester and someone will be able to help you find a recipe to plug those in. Just remember, if they're older, they're gonna take longer to cook, okay? Okay, and that sounds awesome. You guys have been just amazing and I really appreciate you being here. As always, um, I'm sending you lots of love and kindness and happiness for your day. Just remember to spread that kindness out as much as we can and be patient and understanding if you're out in the world and people are having a hard time because pretty much everybody's having a little bit of a hard time. There are very few people that just thrive and do their best on all these changes. Um, and Oh, great. And she's a Chef AJ. Follow she follows Chef AJ, too. I love, I love me some Chef AJ. Uh, Joanne says she's doing okay and um, that I make her feel connected with the world. Oh, thank you. You guys connect me to the world. <laughs> I'm just here in Durham, North Carolina, and I am happy to know how all of you guys are doing. I think these one o'clocks are really helping us build our community during this more difficult time. And and I think that's awesome. I think you guys are awesome. And Brandy says, thank you. It was a great unboxing. Oh, no, Brenda said, I'm sorry. It was Brenda, not Brandy. And, um, and Jenny gives us all a little heart. So I'll leave us there with that. So there's lots of love for ever. There's beans, love, and we get to hang out a little bit and talk. What, what better day could it be, right? This is a great day. So when you get off, of, of this live. Hopefully you feel inspired to cook up some beans. And if you do, I want to see the picture of your dinner over at Vegan Recipes Cooking with Kathy Hester. And if you don't want to answer all those questions and you've been watching the lives, just put Kathy sent me. Okay. And then I'll just let you in. And you guys are the best community ever. And I will be talking to you tomorrow. And if you have something you want to know about, put a question in, and I'll see if I can talk about that, okay? If not, I am leaning towards making an oat, rolled oat-based ice creamless milkshake. So that may be what we do tomorrow. Because you can make it with pantry ingredients. It can be a little treat. You can even use dates to sweeten it. So it could be pretty interesting. But if you have something more fun for us to do, let's do that. Okay, again, be kind, help, help who you can, ask for help when you need it. Okay, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.